John McClain, the Hall of Famer, missed seeing him at the Super Bowl, but he's been to dozens of them, so it's not like he's missing it. But, John, thanks for your time with Craig and Paul and, and Smokey. Uh, your, your thoughts, I, I thought the 49ers had a couple of things go bad, the, the muff punt, which was just a fluky deal. But in the end, here we go with Kansas City and the so-called word of a dynasty. And they, uh, they are a dynasty, and they won by three points. The 49ers didn't lose that game. The Chiefs won it. And uh, one of the reasons Kyle Shanahan took the ball first, and I got no problem with that, uh, is, is his defense was gas. They just had a 13-play drive. They were just worn out. They needed time. They still couldn't stop them. And uh, McCaffrey's fumble, the flukes, as you mentioned, David on the punt. Uh, and they still lost by three. And uh, they lost to the best quarterback in the NFL, one who's uh, one of the greatest in history. There's no shame in it, disappointment, of course. But the 49ers have been in two. Bud Grant lost four. He's in the Hall of Fame. Marv Levy lost four. He's in the Hall of Fame. There's a lot of coaches that lost two Super Bowls or championships who are still in the Hall of Fame. And Kyle Shanahan's going to be coaching another 20 or 30 years. So he's got a chance to win multiples. John, the the 49ers are up against it salary cap wise, and the trend is um, that the team who loses takes uh, a huge step back uh, the next year. We saw the Eagles do it uh, this year, barely, really kind of barely even made the playoffs and, and gotten throttled by the Bucks when they did. Uh, what do you see as the future of them, at least immediately, with their salary cap situation, which I think, according to Over the Cap right now, they have like $3 million. The Eagles started off 10-1, and one, and they lost both coordinators, and that hurt. And now they fired those coordinators this year because Jalen Hurts regressed. You know, they're 10 and no Super Bowl team other than the Patriots. No loser has gone back the next year other than New England, going back to the 90s. And so there's a reason. You'd think that the Super Bowl loser would be the hungriest team in the NFL, but for whatever reason, they don't go back. That does not bode well for the 49ers. Maybe they'll be the first other than the Patriots. Usually to do that, you need a great quarterback. Brock Purdy is not yet a great quarterback. And, and uh, so I think uh, the way you overcome when you're over the cap, They've got to be under the cap on the start of the league year in March. You, you, you get rid of players. You extend players to get their salary cap figure lower. And they'll be able to do that. Now, they're going to lose some players. they got a couple of those defensive linemen like Chase Young, Randy Gregory. They knew they were rentals. They've got too much money tied up into their defensive line to re-sign anybody. And guys are not going to take hometown discounts. So their team will look different, but they have – most of their big playmakers still under contract. Then you got to figure with Shanahan calling the plays and Brock Purdy going into his third season, he should improve the way he improved this year on his rookie season. John, the uh, Patrick Mahomes love is is all over the place. You don't have to look forward to see people praising him and, and talking about just how great he already is and, and obviously how great he can be. Usually it's the media that starts to turn the page really quickly, but you had Travis Kelsey there in the post game already talking about wanting to go grab the three-peat next year. Can you just kind of make sense of uh, the Chiefs, but to a more specific extent, the, the greatness that you see from Patrick Mahomes with yet another Super Bowl given all of the great players you've seen over the decades? Craig, eight teams have had a chance to repeat. None of them even reach the Super Bowl the next year. That doesn't bode well for the Chiefs, just like it doesn't bode well for the 49ers next season uh, to go back to the Super Bowl. As far as Mahomes, if he retired today, he'd still be a first ballot member of the Pro Football of Fame because of his achievements. You know, they great quarterbacks like him and Brady, uh, players come and go, but they're constant. They have great coaches, and they still win. Tyree Kill was traded. They've won two Super Bowls. They've changed their offense. And a, and I saw a list of the players that they turned the Tyree Kill trade into. It's amazing how well they've done. That's the thing. If you're going to get rid of your star players for draft choices, you have to cash in. And uh, so I think Mahomes, he's, he's, you know, a lot of people are trying to say he's better than Brady. Give me a break. 
Brady won seven Super Bowls, including one with a second team. He beat Mahomes in the only one they've gone to, but Mahomes is in the conversation right now to be in the second best in history, and he's got plenty of time at his age to uh, catch Brady, maybe even pass him, and then Brady, the mantle would be passed to him as the greatest of all time. In fact, we had uh, Todd Lebo on from Sports Radio in Kansas City that when he's talked to Mahomes before, what has driven him crazy, not that he, he hates losing, but he lost to Brady in that game in Tampa. I was there for that one, head-to-head. That's like a two-point swing. And then he also lost to uh, Brady in a playoff game that led to, I think, Brady winning another Super Bowl. And so he's he, – yeah, and, and Brady went a decade. Remember the frustrations and then the nine Giants. Nine years. Nine years and still won seven. That's hard to imagine that you could have that kind of a gap and yet have that kind of a lead over everybody else who's ever played the game. Well, that's because he played longer than anybody. You know, if he just played till he was 37 or 38, you know, he wouldn't add all that hard work. And maybe Mahomes will be able to play. He's been able like Brady. Brady missed one season. He blew out his knee in the first game. They still went 11-5 and five with Matt Castle, didn't make the playoffs. And everybody said, that shows you what a great coach Bill Belichick is. And that's what people thought at the time. And he is great, of course, but he hasn't been good without Brady. And Mahomes at some point is probably going to have to play without Andy Reid. You know, people are saying, well, Andy is one of the greatest coaches in history. Yes, he has been since he got Mahomes. Before that, he was a really good coach who had issues with clock management and game management and got criticized for it. Then he makes one of the greatest trades in NFL history, and now he's a genius. And plus, he's just gotten better as an offensive coach, and he's smart enough to give Steve Spagnuolo for his defensive coordinator. Spags is tied all time for most uh, Super Bowls as his defensive coordinator with uh, Dick LeBeau. And uh, I don't think he'll ever be a head coach again. A lot of people are saying now, oh, he needs to be a head coach again. No, some guys are just better as coordinators, and now they pay those guys several million a year. Somehow they're able to survive. John, what is your best guess on what happens with Chris Jones? I think, uh, you know, he had the long holdout. He was fined several million dollars. He made jokes about what he had to win the Super Bowl uh, to make up for some of the money he lost. It's interesting. He was great in the Super Bowl. He hadn't done squat in their other Super Bowl. I saw a list of his stats, and they, he was goose eggs. And now he was played a huge role. He's up for more money. Uh, I can't imagine they're going to let him get away. And uh, I don't think he'll get the kind of money he's hoping to get from another team. And I uh, hope that for the Chiefs' sake, he stays because he fits perfectly in that defense. How quickly do you think the Texans, with their salary cap move and the fact that they've got C.J. Stroud, can make a move and be at least one round better next year? Uh, well, first of all, the problem they've always had here, they have never hosted a divisional playoff game. They won a lot of wild card games, but they go on the road and they've lost every divisional game. We have not had a team in the AFC championship game since the 79 Oilers went to Pittsburgh and lost the second consecutive game one, sh- one step shy of the Super Bowl. So the key is to play at home and not on the road. And they've got to add some more talent. They've got like 68 million people here. Oh, my God, they're going to sign Chris Jones. They're going to sign all these stuff. No, they're not. That does, They may have the fourth most money available, but that's not a lot. That's not the MO that Nick Casario has shown. But uh, it, what they did last offseason with the draft and free agency bodes well. they got like 36 guys on expiring contracts, and I'm guessing they won't back maybe 10 or 12, and some of those would be cheap because they're not going anywhere. But the key is you got to stay healthy and you got to play the game at home. Had they not blown road games to Atlanta and Carolina on field goals with no time left on the clock, you know, they would have had 12 12 victories and they would have gotten a game at home. But, you know, you live and you learn next year they're playing a first-place schedule. 
that is going to be murderers row. But if you're going to be good, you got to step up and deal with it. John, the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2024 announced Dwight Freeney, Devin Hester, Andre Johnson, Julius Peppers, Patrick Willis, then also Randy Gratishar and Steve Mongo McMichael from the Seniors Committee side of things. Your thoughts on the class of 24, knowing you have a, an instrumental role there, and, and obviously uh, even a bit more locally and, and personal there with uh, Andre Johnson getting the call as well. Now, I'm on the regular committee. I'm on the Seniors Committee. I provide presented Andre to our committee the way I did Chuck Alley last year. And I tell you, it's an enormous responsibility. And when you don't get a guy in who you present, it's so frustrating. And especially a guy like Andre Johnson, no Texan, his first Texan superstar. He comes so close his first two years of eligibility. There was a, a log jam with Reggie Wayne and Torrey Hall this year. I changed up my presentation a little bit when I finished my five-minute presentation. Others spoke up on his behalf. And so I was so glad because I know what a Hall of Famer looks like. And I covered all of his practices, games, saw him on the field, off the field, in the locker room. He is the personification of everything you want. I'm so happy for him. Such a class act. Not like a lot of wide receivers that pour gasoline on themselves and light a match to get attention. You know, he was quiet. And I was at his house. I wrote a behind-the-scenes story that is the longest story I've ever written about the knock on the door of his house. And it ran on the Texans' website, HoustonTexans.com. It's one of the best things I ever wrote. And the reason is because it was I was the only media person there. And I was allowed because I'm on the selection committee. And I presented him. And it's on their website, HoustonTexans.com. And there's no paywall. And I took so much pride in being able to to present him and watch him uh, be shocked when the door of his house opened and his mama started screaming and Chris Carter standing there in his gold jacket welcoming Andre to the Hall of Fame while he cried and he was so numb and in shock he didn't remember a word Chris Carter told him. I, I do, I, if you don't mind, Paul, Steve McMichael, I, mm -hmm. I watched the feature on him. He's got ALS, um, an unbelievable story and, and what it meant his wife right there by his side. That's, that's incredibly powerful and very sad and yet also heartwarming. Well, I'll tell you this. We didn't put him in there because he had ALS. We, it wasn't even mentioned. We put him in there because he deserved it. And of course, we're all aware of it. We've seen so many stories. And his wife has been really outspoken, but that had nothing to do with anything. Bam Bam deserved it. He was very underrated on the, one of the greatest defenses in history. And uh, I'm glad that he, he was able to know, unlike Chuck Alley, who has Alzheimer's and still may not know that he was in the Hall of Fame, but I'm glad Steve McMichael was able to know he'd been voted into the Hall of Fame. John, I'm going to throw out um, some other names from the 2001 Miami Hurricanes roster, which Andre Johnson was a part of that, maybe the best uh, college football roster ever, uh, arguably, um, so he's the first Hall of Famer out, out of that roster. Ed Reed is going to be a Hall of Famer, correct? No, Ed, Ed's already in the Hall of Famer. Ed's already in. Sorry, he's the second. I'm sorry. That's right. Ed's already in. So Andre's the second Hall of Famer out of that. Vince Wilfork, will he get in? I believe Vince will get in, yes. he got multiple Super Bowl rings. Yeah. Jeremy Shockey, will he get in? Mm. No, I don't think. His name has never come up. Okay. No. And Bryant McKinney, will he ever get in? Yeah, his name's never come up either. Okay. Those are the ones who were, like, again, right there on the cusp. They were really good players, but um, three Hall of Famers from that one college football team. And, oh, Frank Gore. I think Frank Gore will get in strictly because he played so long. He's, like, third in rushing. Uh, but, boy, he, he didn't, he's, I don't think he'll get in on the first ballot. But no. I do think he'll get in because of longevity. Yeah, the comp compilation of uh, the of all the stats uh, accumulating what he did over the years. Maybe a, at some point a, a veterans committee and, type uh, of deal too. And Sean Taylor probably would have gotten in. Oh my God, yeah. Based Sean on Taylor was one of the all time best. If he hadn't been shot to death, he definitely would have been in. John, anything else, Paul? Nope. Thank you, John. Appreciate your time. Hall of Fame. I got yourself. one more. I got one more thing. Second. Second. There we go. John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist with us.